Hello there, welcome back to the new video. So in this video, we'll be going through a part of this paper, which is titled as Benchmarking Zero Shot Text Classification, Datasets, Evaluation and Entailment Approach. This is from researchers from University of Pennsylvania. So today I don't have my iPad chart, so I'll just be highlighting some of the stuff as I explain. And especially from this paper, I'll be talking about the entailment approach, which authors propose for doing the zero shot text classification. So first talking about what zero shot text classification is, it's again based out of zero shot learning paradigm where the idea is that you don't have a single label training data for your model to learn from for a particular example on which you're trying to do the inference later on. And the similar thing is now what you can extend and think about it being used in text classification scenario. So for example, if we take this piece of text, which is this one. So now you can do multiple kinds of classification on this. One could be based on topic where you say if it belongs to health, finance, politics and so on. You can also detect emotion in this. We can also detect situation in this. And there could be all lot of possible labels that you can kind of tag this text into. So most of the research in this space has been done with respect to identifying topics and that too under a constraint of fixed set of labels in which you would want to classify your text into. But in this paper by adapting to the entailment task, we can classify this text into n number of topic labels and need not be confined to a defined set. And at the same time, you can also identify emotions. You can do classification of the situation and so on and so forth. So that's the major idea of this paper. Now let's move to the main section to what I wanted to discuss. Cool. An entailment model for zero shot text classification. Okay, so this is more in line with how humans think. So for example, if I give you a piece of text and ask you to classify it, mentally you will be kind of posing the classification problem as an entailment task. So if the document was about sports, then you might ask in your brain is like whether this text talk about sport or not. Or let's say if it's about emotion detection, then you might say whether this text expresses greed or maybe whether this text expresses sadness. So this is how you would kind of do inference in your brain. So this is the exact modeling behavior that you want to apply to the text classification task. Unlike the previous versions of it, where what we used to do is like we used to have a fixed set of predefined classes to which we would throw a neural network or any kind of function approximator to kind of learn a function that maps your text into these labels. But there the problem was like the model was not essentially understanding the meaning of these labels. It was just treating them as target or indices to which the mapping had to be done. It didn't quite understand what the word sadness would mean. Although it might infer it from the patterns from the data while it sees multiple text segments that relate to one particular task. But explicitly there was no notion of model learning what sadness means as a prior. So now by modeling this entire task as a text entailment problem, we will be taking into consideration both the text piece as well as the meaning of the labels. So now let's talk a bit about text entailment problem. So if you see this example, a senior is waiting at the window of a restaurant that serves sandwiches. So this is the premise what we said initially. Then it is done multiple hypotheses. Let's say a person waits to be served his food. A man is looking to order a grilled cheese sandwich. Or maybe a man is waiting in line for the bus. So if you see the first hypothesis, entailment is a better tag compared to neutral and contradiction for this. Because this is about the same scene that we're talking about in the premise. Also this kind of follows the entire sequence of what has been set in the premise already. Whereas if you see the last one, which is a man is waiting in the line for the bus, which should be tagged as contradiction because the scenes are totally different to what has been already set in the premise. I hope now the task of entailment is pretty clear. So this is exactly what we do with our text classification problem. So for example, if we have a text about a certain topic T, then we might want to formulate its hypothesis as saying the text is about T, where T is that topic which is common in the premise as well. And the similar thing can be done for different aspects of the classification, which is topic, emotion, and situation. So if you see this uh, table, let's say, for topic, let's say if the label was sports, then you can tag it as this text talks about sports. So this is one of the ways you can formulate your hypothesis for a given premise. And similarly, for let's say the task of identifying situation, if the, one of the labels is shelter, then if you have a premise that talks about people, shelter, need, all of that stuff, then the interpretation and the formulation for this hypothesis could be the people there need shelter. Authors also play around by seeing if apart from just adding single word, which is the label and formulating it under a certain template, if you can also use definition for these classes directly 
derived from word net. So for example, if you have the aspect as topic again, the label was sport, then instead of saying the text is about sport, you can also devise another hypothesis that is a little more descriptive and says the text talks about an active diversion requiring physical exertion and competition. So similarly for emotion, if the label was anger, so instead of just saying one of the hypotheses as this text expresses anger, you might want to devise another hypothesis which is more descriptive and say this text expresses a strong emotion, a feeling that is oriented towards some real or supposed grievance. So yeah, that's again two ways how you can devise your hypothesis in a little automated fashion. Although one of the experiments that author do is to combine word and definitions both, which is this combination part. And we'll see to the results of this as we come to this section. Okay. So I guess now you understood how we are trying to devise this entire problem. Okay, now, but you might ask like, we have the premise, which is the actual text that you want to classify. We have the hypothesis, which is based on certain rules or templates that you apply or words or its definition and device in your sentence. Now you have a text pair. Now, what do you do ahead of this? So on this, now the idea is to train a BERT model on a natural language inference task. So in this paper, they try out three datasets, which is MNLI, Glue Text Entailment and Fever. So for each of these three datasets, they train a BERT model with a binary head with categories being entailment and non-entailment. So they just keep entailment as the positive category and something else such as neutral, contradiction, all of that as non-entailment. And this is how given two text pairs, the model will either say the hypothesis entails premise or it doesn't entail it. So with this generic model, they go ahead and test their samples in two fashion, where one is the label fully unseen setup and another is label partially unseen setup. Wherein under label fully unseen setup, the idea is, is that let's say if you have a task of five labels, then you would directly do inference from a pre-trained model without having made that model seen any of these labels. Whereas in label partially unseen setup, let's say if you have a task with five labels, then you would kind of fine tune your pre-trained model on three to two of them and predict on the remaining two. So they did experiments under these two settings. I am mostly interested in seeing the label fully unseen setup. So let's come to the results for that. Yeah. So they performed experiment for three tasks, which is topic detection, emotion, and situation. This RTE, FEV, and MN are the entailment datasets on which they kind of pre-trained their BERT model. ENS is for ensemble and word definition, the combination of using word and definition for framing the hypothesis. So we can see, right, if we use the word hypothesis, which is what we saw in one of the examples, where you have the premise and you say, this looks like dash, where dash is nothing but, let's say, sadness or, or let's say sports, if it's about topic. So that kind of hypothesis, whereas definition was the word net thing and combination is using both of them at the same time. So performance with just using word hypothesis is pretty great. So probably with definition, the model is getting confused because it's a little more descriptive and might also be a little off from the distribution of the datasets on which the model is pre-trained on. So the ensemble version is nothing but, so for each of these, right, the model will be giving two probabilities, which is for yes and no, which is if it's entailing or not. They did the summation for yes and no across all these three settings and did a final softmax and whatever was the result is what you choose. So that's what the ensemble is. And finally, the summation, which is nothing but element wise summation for each of them over here is what you put over here. So eventually it looks like if you see across all three settings, across all three datasets, ensemble version where you use the combination of word and definition performs the best, followed by just using word with the last option of just using definition as the hypothesis. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So I guess, yeah, we are done with the paper now. So if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the like button and share it across with your friends. Also smash the subscribe button to not miss out on any videos. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.